Hello and welcome back. In the late 1970s, Star Wars took over the imaginations of children all over the world, and Star Wars toys by Kenner took over the toy aisles. At the start of the Star Wars phenomenon, many other companies tried to throw their hats into the ring and cash in on the sci-fi toy craze. Mattel introduced toy lines for Battlestar Galactica and Flash Gordon, while Mego came out with toys from Buck Rogers, The Black Hole, and Star Trek The Motion Picture. Smaller toy companies also tried their hand at making science fiction based toys, like the Staroid Raiders from Tomland and the Star Team from Ideal. While many of these toy lines featured action figures, most of them done in the three and three quarter inch scale, Timmy Toys took a different approach by releasing a group of figures called the Galaxy Laser Team. These figures, also marketed as the Star Patrol, were two-inch tall plastic figures similar to Army Men, which were and still are an evergreen toy. The Galaxy Laser Team was obviously inspired by Star Wars, but took aesthetic cues from older classic science fiction properties. Galaxy Laser Team featured eight different characters and one X-Wing style spaceship that came packed in bags with header cards that were sold in places like drugstores, grocery stores, and discount chains like Woolworth. The original figures came in an assortment that was comprised of four colors, green, pink, black, and white. The figures did not have individual names or a backstory, at least in the US. So it was left up to the imagination of children as to exactly who these figures were. We've talked about Timmy Toys a couple of other times on this channel, when I discussed the legendary battles figures, fantasy figures remolded from Marvel characters, as well as the classic dinosaur and caveman figures, along with the Battle Mountain. The first of these figures is the one I call the Hero. He is the dashing Buck Rogers Flash Gordon Han Solo archetype, with a very 1950s sci-fi look about him. This figure is what fans commonly refer to as the Space Yeti, He's a furry space creature that seems inspired by Chewbacca. In fact, he bears a striking resemblance to the Chewbacca concept art that was done by artist Ralph McQuarrie. That design was later used to create the character of Zeb Aurelius in Star Wars Rebels. Next, we have the only female character in the assortment, who I call the Princess, who is permanently attached to that computer console. Her outfit reminds me of the uniforms that female characters wore in the original Star Trek series, with the mini skirt and go-go boots. Of course, what would a sci-fi series be without a robot? And this is our robot for the Galaxy Laser Team. Looks to be inspired by R2-D2, but rather than being shaped like a trash can, this guy is shaped more like a mailbox. The hero is only as good as the villain he fights, and I don't think I have to tell you who this figure is inspired by. Very much a Darth Vader-esque figure, with a little bit of Ming the Merciless thrown in. It's always good to have an alien or two on hand. And this is our second non-human character in the assortment. Most fans refer to him as the Turtle Crab Monster, for obvious reasons. The last two figures in the assortment deviate from that fantasy sci-fi look, and appear more like regular human astronauts, and that's because they are. These two figures are reuses of astronauts that came packed in with Apollo rocket toys. My theory as to why these were included with the more fantasy style figures is that with their flight suits and helmets on, you can kind of sort of see these guys as X-Wing pilots. And that's important because you also get this small X-Wing fighter. Now this is not in scale with the figures at all. But if you're doing space figures, it also helps to have some spaceships. In addition to the smaller 2-inch tall figures, Timmy also released an assortment of larger 5-inch figures. These larger figures are great for better seeing the sculpted detail on the characters. Unfortunately, this larger assortment only included six of the figures from the assortment. The princess and one of the spacemen did not make the cut. Timmy also released a number of roleplay items to coincide with the release of the figures. These included a helmet, a laser sword, a ray gun pistol, and a rifle. What's interesting about these roleplay toys 
is that they predate the Galaxy Laser Team and were sold in the 1950s and 1960s during the Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon sci-fi craze of that era. I don't think we know who actually sculpted the Galaxy Laser Team figures, but whoever did incorporated those pre-existing sci-fi toys into the sculpts. So our Spaceman Hero is wielding that laser pistol and wearing the laser helmet from that roleplay assortment. And our Space Yeti friend has the rifle. So I think that was a brilliant use of pre-existing molds. Take the roleplay toys you already have, incorporate them into the new figure sculpts, and then resell the toys as tie-ins to the figures. I remember as a kid having that space helmet, and I kitbashed it by adding a beak-like visor to it, creating some eyes to put on it, and I made myself a do-it-yourself Battle of the Planets G-Force helmet. Timmy also sold their version of the X-Wing in a larger mold as well. I also had the larger version as a kid. I remember it being about 7 to 8 inches long. It was a little more in scale with the 2-inch figures, but could not open up to actually hold any figures. And if you're a fan of fighter craft and this body style looks familiar to you, that's because it is. Timmy created this X-Wing by taking a pre-existing mold of an F-16, adding an extra set of wings to it, and offsetting the wings into an X. Another pretty clever mold reuse. In the early 20-teens, Timmy Toys returned and started reissuing their older figures through the company J. Lloyd International Inc., which has since become Alpha International Inc. Each of their reissue assortments comes in two colors, with an even number of characters in each color. The first reissues came in traditional bags with this header card with some nice retro artwork on it. And you can see here that they are made in the USA. And the back of the card features the J. Lloyd International information. More recent assortments have come in bags. And instead of a header card, the bags are sealed and this placard is inserted into the bag. Same artwork as the header card. Only now we can see the name has changed to Alpha International. I have tried to collect all the different color assortments of the reissue lines. So here we have blue and green, traditional army men colors, tan and olive green, red and yellow, orange and purple, red and orange in slightly different hues than we saw previously, and black and silver. I think that covers pretty much any color you'd want in these figures. Now when you have figures, it's also nice to have a playset to go along with them. And while Timmy does not make a Galaxy Laser Team playset, I did find this. This is the Mars Outpost playset, made by a company called BMC Toys. This is another plastic figure maker that does reissues of classic molds. And this Mars Outpost is a reissue of some space toys from the 1960s. They are made to the same type and quality as the stuff that Timmy Toys does. And I think these playset pieces work really well with the aesthetic of the Galaxy Laser Team figures. And as you can see, the Mars Outpost also comes with a number of small purple alien creatures. Those alien creatures are also reissues from a series of figures called Astro Knits, which were given away as Cracker Jack premiums back in the 1960s. And of course, as far as playsets, the classic Timmy Battle Mountain is always an option. The Battle Mountain can easily go from Army Men Battlefield to Prehistoric Mountain to an alien landscape for more science fiction themed figures. Now, I had previously said that the Galaxy Laser Team figures did not have any names or a backstory in the U.S., but that was not the case in Argentina. Antiojito was an Argentine children's magazine named after a character created by cartoonist Manuel Garcia Ferre. And apologies if I'm pronouncing any of that incorrectly. The first issue of Antiojito was published in October 1964, and it ran until December 2001, publishing a whopping 1,925 issues. In the early 1980s, a comic strip began running in this magazine called Ekaton, 
The Lost Town of Space. With each issue of the magazine, a small figure was given away as a premium. And these figures, and the comic strip, were the characters from the Galaxy Laser Team. The synopsis of this story is as follows. Hyperion, a planet where human civilization sees its existence in danger, decides to emigrate to space, and build an artificial planet called Ecaton. Ecaton is carried away by the inertia of a comet's tail and disappears forever. The ancient inhabitants of Hyperion send Delta, Torio, and the cosmonauts on an interstellar journey to find the ancient Hyperions, the people lost in space. It's unclear if this was an official tie-in with Timmy Toys, or if the creators of this story simply used these figures as inspiration to create this mythology. But it is very interesting that these nameless figures from the U.S. became a fully fleshed out story in Argentina. The names of the characters were given as follows. The character I call the princess was named Delta. She was the commander of the mission. The robot was named Katio. He was in charge of securing the safety of the spacecraft and its occupants while they were in hypersleep. Our hero character was named Torio. The two astronauts were named Uska and Inti. The Vader-like villain was named Manu. The Chewbacca-like space yeti, Simiolus. And the turtle crab alien was named Quelonios. I've searched for the full version of this comic strip online, but many of the sources I found have led to dead ends. So if anyone knows where the full Ecaton comic strip is available to view, let me know in the comments below. Now there is one more bit of mythology concerning these figures that we can talk about, and it is one that I created. Kind of. Back when I was in grade school, I received an assignment from the teacher to come up with an original storybook. And this is that storybook from 1979. And I still have the grade from the teacher on it. B plus for creativity, that's a little generous, as you'll see. Organization B plus, and constructional details, I got an A. Although this was supposed to be an original story, many of the elements in it I took from things I enjoyed at the time. And the main characters of this story were based on the Galaxy Laser Team figures. So as we see from the cover, I called it Space Wars. That's original, huh? The bad guy base up here is obviously modeled after the Legion of Doom headquarters from Challenge of the Super Friends. And the good guy spaceship you see here is roughly modeled after G-Force's spaceship, the Phoenix from Battle of the Planets. On the back cover is my little character guide from the time. Our heroine I named Princess Organa, that was really original. The little Chewbacca-like guy I named Ronk. I took some artistic liberties with the bad guy and named him Darkon. Kind of changed up his helmet a little, a little bit to give him some spikes. Our little robot friend was named Bleep. I named the hero Captain Astro. And our little turtle crab alien was named Toron. He was king of an alien race called the Tortoids. This is a basic bad guy versus good guy space adventure story. The bad guy goes to attack the good guys and the good guys win, basically. I kept the name Star Patrol for the characters, and this is the headquarters of the Star Patrol Center Saturn. In Battle of the Planets, G-Force was stationed at Center Neptune, so that's where that came from. I also had them fighting a giant monster called the Serpentine. Of course, being a giant monster kid, I had to incorporate that into the story. I also may have been influenced by the uh, Marvel Star Wars comics I was reading back then. In the first Marvel Star Wars adventure, Han and Chewie and a group of other characters do battle with a giant reptile such as this. In the final battle of the story, I gave Toron the ability to grow in size by chanting the magic words, Shabala Karabim. Obviously kind of a riff on Apache Chief from the Super Friends, where he says the magic words, Inekchuk, and is able to grow into a giant. I was inspired to do this by the toys. In my playtime, I would often use the 5-inch turtle crab alien to give the 2-inch guy the ability to grow in size. And you can enjoy some of my crude artwork for the battle scene here. Luckily, my drawing skills have improved since then. And I still have this in my possession because my mother kept it all those years. And that's why moms keep 
all the projects that their kids do. So when the kids grow up to be adult nerds, they can make videos about them. That's it for my look at the Star Patrol, aka the Galaxy Laser Team. Some awesome little toys from my childhood. And at the time of this recording, Timmy Toys and BMC have teamed up to create a Galaxy Laser Team bucket, which includes the Galaxy Laser Team figures and a variation of the Mars Outpost playset pieces. So if these type of toys interest you, you can get a lot of them in one shot. I will leave links to both Timmy and BMC Toys in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.